What's up guys, CP Mona here, back with another video. Now the other day I was on the internet, as most of us are, and a question came up to me was, what exactly do I need to get started on working on computers? Not necessarily building computers, but just get working on them, pulling them apart, testing them out, and those kinds of things. And I thought, Hang on a second, I haven't exactly covered this, so today I thought let's throw together a video sharing with you my favourite tools and things that I reckon everybody should have in their basic or at least some sort of PC troubleshooting kit. Now the things that we're going to include today should be able to cover everything from very basic fixes to more complex fixes. Basically anything you need to do with computers can theoretically be done with everything in our list here today. Now yes, if you are going to work on specific server things that need specific tools or specific electronics that need specific tools obviously you'll need to buy those specific tools however today whatever you really need to get done is what you're going to get done and especially if you've got PCs like what's over my shoulder that need some work done on them this list will definitely help so let's go ahead and get started now the first thing you obviously need is yourself because without you you can't exactly do anything now yes you may be thinking well hang on a second how is me doing anything you want well basically the what I actually mean by that is be in a state of mind that you are going to fix the system. A lot of the time when something breaks, a lot of people throw their hands up and say, I don't know how to fix this, and then look for another solution to go ahead and fix this. It's important that you, I guess, are in the mindset of going to actually fix it, or if it's your system, also to being in the mindset of not freaking out because it is a super expensive system. Every time I talk about working on computers or anything like that, I always come back to the fact that I say, just take a break for a moment from what you're doing so you can come back and look at things objectively and your mindset is the most important part to a good tool set. I guess your brain is another tool here. But actually things that you can buy and those types of things and actually hold because holding your brain would be a bit of a problem. Anyway, uh, the first thing you need is the internet. Without the internet, you're basically lost because there are so many problems that can happen to computers. It's not possible for a single person to remember everything. Sure, the more experience you have, the easier it's going to be, but... Unless you're like some genius who can remember everything just like that, you're not going to remember everything with a computer. Every computer is going to have a different configuration. That system behind me, even if you build a very similar one, might have totally different problems with it. So definitely the internet is a really important one. Again, looking up little codes that you might find and uh, also to looking up symptoms, really, really handy thing to have. And this combined with the next thing that we'll talk about, these two things basically can fix any computer problem out there. And speaking of that other thing, we have the screwdriver set. Now, with the internet and the screwdriver set, that's really all you need to fix any problem with a computer because one, the screwdriver set will get inside the computer and the internet will help tell you what's exactly wrong inside of that computer. Now, yes, it's a little bit more complex. However, a good screwdriver set and toolkit, well, more screwdriver set is definitely something you do want to pick up. For me, iFixit is always a great place to start. Some people aren't exactly the world's happiest customers with the quality. However, for a really good quality entry-level kit, it definitely has got you covered. Sure, don't get me wrong, you can buy more expensive and higher-end tools out there, but for something that delivers a decent price point and also to decent quality for what we get, you can't go wrong. I've had my iFixit toolkit Wow, actually for nearly seven years now, and it's sure got a couple of little bits and pieces that are broken off, uh, but honestly still works just as good as the day that I bought it. And I always say, if you're going to buy tools, buy something that's a little bit more expensive that will last you years and years and years and you will save yourself so much money. Don't cheap out on your screwdriver set because not only will the screwdrivers break, but also to the electronics you are working on. You might break a screw, you might strip a nut or something like that. You may run into other issues if you cheap out on your tool set. So a good set of tools in terms of screwdrivers is another thing you do want to pick up. And I guess the rest of the things on our list is just a nice to have because screwdriver and the internet can get you through almost any problem. Now speaking of those nice things to have, a good set of lights or some sort of light is the best thing to have. Now, for me, I'm into videos and creating videos and those types of things, so that's really opened my mind up into other ways to lighting up options other than a typical torch you might hold in your hand. And because of this, I've discovered video lights and computers go hand in hand. This guy right here is your standard DSLR type of uh, video light that's meant to be mounted on top of a camera, and you can pick these guys up on eBay for relatively cheap prices. They've got a bunch of LEDs, a dimmer switch on the back, 
back and they run on cheap Sony batteries. Now, the reason why I like these things is they are unbelievably bright. They are the brightest lights you can think of because essentially what they're designed for is lighting up an entire room in some cases for a camera to see. And if you've used a camera, you probably know that uh, the camera's vision isn't as good in terms of darkness as a human eye. So the amount of light these things throw out is absolutely insane. Now, another benefit of using these things is the cheap batteries. Because they are powered by rechargeable batteries from the Sony series, they're relatively cheap. And because the film and video industry is relatively large, you can get these batteries just about anywhere. And they last, in terms of these big ones, for around seven hours on full brightness with a little LED panel like what we got here. You can buy much smaller panels and use much smaller batteries and then get the same battery life. Or you could use smaller batteries on this guy and get a little bit less battery life. But either way, battery life and runtime on this guy is absolutely incredible. I also do like to mount these guys on a magic arm with a little clamping head and that allows me to mount the light just about anywhere. Throw in some microfiber cloths between the little claws of it and you can mount it even to a PC case and really light up the whole scene. I personally love to use these guys when I have to crawl underneath a table, maybe I'm at a call out and I need to light up the area because they've got like some little terrible desk lamp or a roof lamp that really isn't that great. Being able to just mount this guy to the side of their desk, flip it on and have the entire underneath of their desk completely lit up as if I have the sun under there is something I really do like. Just don't look at the actual light, you'll basically go blind. So video light on a magic arm is something that I really do recommend. If you can't pick one up, standard torch is also too fine. Another thing to also do pick up is a can of compressed air or an air compressor or an air blower or something that will get dust and debris out of a computer. It's really great to be able to work on it and use a little brush to brush out pieces of dust, but let's face it, when you do start to work on a number of computers or you do get something that is hyper clogged up, uh, the last thing you want to do is be flipping around with little brushes and bits and pieces, not really the greatest thing. So a can of compressed air is a great place to start, although they can be a little bit costly if you are gonna be using them a lot. So I do recommend grabbing yourself a small air compressor or even one of those little electronic blowy kind of things. These guys right here, you can find them on PC case stores and they're relatively cheap and they do a really good job for what they deliver. Basically, some way to blow out dust that isn't something like a hairdryer or something that would create static is a great place to start. Coming in at number five on our list, a hard drive with Linux or some sort of Unix based operating system ready to go on it. Now, speaking of actually making a world of difference, we have Linux. Now, Linux can run on just about anything and actually is really great for helping you diagnose problems as it doesn't have all the background running BS of uh, Windows and also too isn't locked down to specific hardware like what Mac OS is. So Linux is a great place, especially if you're trying to troubleshoot a problem. Having a hard drive ready to go, an SSD ready to go, or heck, even a uh, USB flash drive ready to go is is really, really important. For me, I've got a 64 gigabyte USB drive that I have Linux installed on so I can quickly boot from it and see what is going on with the computer. Whether it's a bad RAID controller, bad hard drive, bad RAM, or even a bad motherboard, I've actually been able to diagnose a lot of different components. Now, no, Linux doesn't flash up a message saying, hey, the motherboard's broken, or hey, the hard drive's broken, but what it can do is allow you to get much closer to those components and run some tests that may not necessarily come back so well, or may not have such conclusive results as what you may find on the Windows side. Don't get me wrong, you can still do all your troubleshooting on Windows, but if you do know Linux and if you are able to get your head around it, it is a really powerful tool for some troubleshooting on a system. And even another great thing about it is that uh, dying or dead drives may actually show up and have a higher chance of showing up on Linux than they do on Mac OS or even on Windows. So that's another thing, if you've got a failing drive, Linux is a great place to start. Number six, rounding out our list, we have a multimeter. Now this guy's not exactly something Thing everybody actually needs. However, it still makes up a really great toolkit. A multimeter is really helpful, especially on all-in-one units and uh, also to laptops and thin and lights, as it allows you to test little bits and pieces around the system. Whereas a big desktop like what's behind me, you can take out the power supply, you can change the RAM over, you can change a lot of components that would rule out the need for a multimeter. However, when everything's soldered together and all integrated, well, looking at it isn't exactly going to help. So having a multimeter that can read out voltages and also to tell you where the positive and negatives are is another thing that I really do like. And hey, once you get one, you can also to test the batteries that are sitting around your room and you can check what voltages they're at and chuck out the ones that are no good. Personally, again, as I did mention, I do use them on laptops and all-in-ones as they're really helpful there. But in general, a multimeter is a really great tool to grab. Then finally, some basic spares to go ahead and test with. Now, I'm not talking 
talking about buying a set of new hard drives or buying a bunch of new RAM or new fans. What I'm actually talking about is little bits and pieces that you have in your toolbox to quickly change in with a system that you are working on. So say for example, you've been called to help someone with a computer that's not exactly booting. If you have a spare hard drive on hand, you can quickly boot off that to make sure that the computer still works and that it is indeed the hard drive itself. Now don't get me wrong, you can still do a bunch of troubleshooting without having spare parts, but having some sort of spare part kit is really, really helpful. And personally, I love my spare part kit, even though it's not the highest end, it still gets the job done. And a lot of people out there might assume that I've got some super high-end parts list with, you know, a 6950X, I've got a 1080 Ti in my parts list, I've also too got, you know, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. When in reality, that's not the case. You don't have to spend very much at all. Heck, you don't even have to buy new parts. All you need to do is make sure that your parts that you're gonna be testing with are known good components. For me, I have a GT610 that I know for a fact is working. I can throw that guy around and it works perfectly fine. I've got some old fans that I stole out of a Dell computer that work perfectly fine. I've got DDR4 all the way back to DDR2 RAM modules from old PCs that I pulled out. They're all just standard green sticks. Nothing really fancy, but they allow me to do all the trouble troubleshooting without having to go out and specifically buy parts. And the best bit is I can just chuck stuff in and out and I don't have to worry too much about it getting damaged or anything like that because let's face it, they're all refurb parts and honestly, they're really not the greatest. Heck, the video card's fan stopped working and that's how I got my hands on it because it stopped working. So I just took it out and put it on my shelf and now I use it as a testing unit. But to the point being, just get yourself some used or spare parts that will help you troubleshoot a system. If you need to pull out a video card, have something else to throw back in. You don't have to have the highest end stuff, but something can help really, really a lot. And there we go, the seven things that I would definitely say need to be in a troubleshooting kit bag for computers little tablets, desktops, laptops, anything like that, this will definitely cover it. Now, if you did want to go ahead and grab something that I mentioned today, you can find the link down in that description box. I'll leave all the bits and pieces that I did talk about down there. And also too, if you do have something that you have in your toolbox, uh, let me know down in that comment sections because definitely this is what I would have, but do let me know what you would put in your toolbox. Guys, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.